Roundtable this week, Dale Butland, Communications Director for Innovation Ohio, a progressive think tank, and Republican analyst Terry Casey back with us again. Gentlemen, this was a week when we saw a real turnaround for Mitt Romney in a way that was maybe the most dramatic drop in numbers we've seen since the campaigning began. Uh, what do you attribute it to? His numbers are not looking good all of a sudden in this state of Ohio. Well, part of it is the problem Mitt Romney's got is things are looking better in Ohio under Governor Kasich. Uh, the economy's better, the budget's balanced. So in some ways, people in Ohio are feeling better about things in a lot of measures because of what this governor's done. It hadn't happened across the country. But in Ohio, that is a key state, uh, this governor has helped things and Mitt Romney's got to explain some of what he would do as president and how that would benefit the people across the country. So you're saying there's an irony that, that Governor Kasich's success could lead to, lead to failure for Mitt Romney? Well, it might be that President Obama after the election, if the trend continues, which is a big if, we got a lot of time to go, he might want to send a big thank you to Governor Kasich. Do you agree with that? Is it John Kasich's actions that are turning things around for Obama here? The truth of the matter is, is that the recovery has continued under Governor Kasich, but it started under Governor Strickland, his uh, pre predecessor. And a big reason for the turnaround in Ohio has been the uh, auto rescue that President Obama put into place that Governor Kasich did not support, and neither, of course, did Mitt Romney, who famously said we should let Detroit go bankrupt. But I would suggest to you, Colleen, that the real reason that uh, Governor Romney's poll numbers have fallen so far this week, what has been shown in an endless loop now on television, this was the tape, the devastating tape of Mitt Romney talking to his wealthy donors, telling them that he was writing off literally half the country, whom he described as, as layabout parasites who were waiting around for a government handout. That is not the way to, to run and win the presidency of this country. You know, it is a very effective ad. They're taking the, Mitt Romney's own words and running them over people, uh, you know, images of what are supposed to be working class Americans. It's pretty effective when you hear it and and people told me when that first came out that's not going to hurt him it won't hurt him that much that'll blow over but do, don't you think that that has had a dramatic impact on the way people are looking at Mitt Romney as an elitist well I give a lot of credit to Obama and the Democrats they've done a good job of taking something that was said and meant one way twisted another way and clearly Mitt Romney in the debate in his advertising has got to get more aggressive on the record of this president the 16 trillion dollar deficit the Obamacare costs the international problems and I don't think the Romney people have been effective they need to do it in the debate they need to do it in future ads they've got to draw out more of the difference between what Romney's for what he would do versus what Obama has not done but how do you think those words are being misinterpreted. You're not the first person that I've heard say that, that it was taken out of context. It's pretty much, you know, when you hear it contextually, when you hear the entire thing, how, how is what he said, how can that be misinterpreted? Well, if you look at the whole thing, and unfortunately a lot of people in the national media don't play the whole thing, they only play a portion of it. And the original question in essence was, why isn't your tax cut message more effective? And he was trying to make the point to, to a lot of people who aren't paying anything in federal income taxes, they're paying other taxes, but they don't understand how tax cuts can equal more jobs. And in essence, Mitt Romney's got to better explain how we want to grow the economy, how we need to compete, why we need more energy, cheaper. Uh, example, the Keystone Pipeline that Obama is opposed to, the higher gasoline prices. He's got to put it in context. So they took one question on one subject, more of a campaigner insider thing, and he didn't explain it more fully. Yes. But, but oh. Dale, isn't the fact that it was a campaigner insider, isn't that what's outraging people? Because they're saying, is this what he really thinks about Of course. Of course, it was American a window voters. into the man's soul. And let's remember, it didn't start with that. It started back during the Republican primaries when all of the candidates running against Mitt Romney, his fellow Republicans, talked about him as being an out-of-touch rich guy who, who uh, frankly, didn't have very many 
sympathies for the regular person. What this video did is it underscored that. It is, it is precisely the problem that Romney's had now for months and months and months. That's what's done it. Now, with regard to Mitt Romney coming out and talking about what he'd like to do to get the country going, the problem he's got, and you see it in, in all the polls, on every issue, whether it's the economy, whether it's Medicare, whether it's foreign policy, jobs, whatever it is, people are siding <clears throat> with President Obama and his plan rather, rather than Mitt Romney's. And the reason that Mitt Romney is not being very specific is because if, if you talk about giving another $5 trillion in tax cuts to the wealthiest Americans at the same time that you're raising taxes on the middle class no, no, and you're no. also relaxing the very regulations on Wall Street that got us into this mess, it's pretty clear that's not very popular. But maybe shouldn't we take him at his word when he says he's not planning to raise taxes on the middle class? Well, that's he, not he, his he, plan? He said I, he's you know, not. The only we've heard say, so many interpretations well, of the only who people, worries about the middle class. Well, the only people say in Rome Romney's going to raise classes, taxes on the middle class are the Democrats in their attack ads. That, They've got no basis, no substance for it. It's just made up, and they believe if you repeat a lie often enough, then people will believe it. But This is a very important point, Colleen, because it is not the Democrats who are saying that. The Nonpartisan Tax Policy Center did a study. One of the co-authors of the study was on the Council of Economic Advisors of George W. Bush. Okay, And what they said was they took Romney at his word. They said Romney says he wants to cut taxes by 20%. That's the first promise he's made. He said he will make it revenue neutral, so it'll raise the same amount of revenue that the current tax system has, uh, and it's not gonna raise the deficit. So the problem is this, as the Tax Policy Center pointed out, if you cut taxes by 20%, you have a $4 trillion gap between what the current system is raising and what it would raise after you cut it by 20%. Romney doesn't deny that, but he says, but the way I'll deal with that is I'll close loopholes. So the Tax Policy Center said we'll give you your economic assumptions that there will be 5% economic growth, 12 million new jobs created, and the problem they came up with is they said he's still $2 trillion short, so therefore he's going to have to raise taxes on the middle class if you're not going to raise the deficit to make that up, and it comes to $2,000 a family. But specifics may come out this week in the debate. You, you mentioned this earlier. He's got to convince people how he's going to do all of that without raising taxes on the middle class, and you know, as you looked for this first debate, what do you think the job is for each of the candidates as they as they face voters for the first time in a forum that really gets away from the campaign ads and away from the rhetoric that you see on TV and gives them a chance to answer questions? What do they have to do? Well, Mitt <clears throat> Romney's got to show how he's going to bring growth back to America because basically, if we don't have growth as we're not having right now, and you continue to increase taxes with Obamacare, all the other taxes, and you don't have economic growth you're not going to have jobs one of the things that Dale and some of the people in the studies they don't look at and realize how much growth we can have in America if we get energy prices under control if we do other things that help unleash bring back manufacturing in the United States uh, but clearly Obama redistributing the wealth doesn't really make everybody better John F Kennedy proved in the 1960s if you do tax cuts you do them smartly it can bring growth back to America well we're really doesn't help, of course, is redistributing money from the bottom and the m middle class to the top, which is what the Republican Party has done for the last oh. 30 years. But on your question about debates, the dirty little secret in politics is that debates rarely change the direction of an election. They barely move the needle. And the reason is, unless there's a gaffe or a really memorable moment, most people come out of the debate supporting the same person they did when they went into the debate. So uh, typically, uh, they, they really don't much matter. And I think it's significant that the Romney campaign is working overtime to say, don't count us out yet. We still have these debates coming up. My experience has been that candidates who say that are usually in for a very long and not very pleasant election night. But we're hearing that Mitt Romney is preparing for the debates more than President Obama has. You know, isn't it a chance if there are those few, uh, you know, w voters who could waver one way or the other, we could see the needle move this week? Or well, do you think, Terry, the same that Dale thinks? This well, is well, Dale's history is a little spotty because I remember very specifically both 1980 
1984, each for different reasons. The debates were very important for Ronald Reagan because people saw in one case, 1980, Ronald Reagan wasn't the crazy guy that was going to drop hydrogen bombs all over the world that the Democrats had tried to paint him. And then in 84, they tried to make it sound like he was too old and over the hill. And when he came back to Walter Mondale and said, I'm not going to exploit your youth and inexperience, <laughs> people realized, hey, the Gipper still has it and understands what he's doing. So debates are partly about do you make mistakes or not, but it also allows people to contrast what is the president's record because sadly, the media really has not looked that much at his record and the promises he made in the campaign four years ago and what he said he would do as president, including the two years when he yeah. had Democrats. Very quick final well, thought. We're almost out of time. It's always the media's fault when the Republicans are not doing well. The fact of the matter is people have looked at Mitt Romney, they found him wanting. But I will say again, the number of times that a debate has really mattered, you can count on one hand in my lifetime. So the fact that Mitt Romney is depending on this, I think is very bad news for him. He's likely to have a long night. Gentlemen, we thank you both for being with us and we'll be right back.